I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, can everybody please state their name, starting with Ken, please? My name is Ken McClellan. Jim Langhorn. Bonnie Elliott. John Maloney. Andrew Stuffler serving as secretary. Okay, we're, we're going to start by opening up uh, for public comment. Um, anyone wishing to speak on items not on the agenda, please note due to time constraints, each person may be limited to two minutes. And uh, James, go ahead and put that up here. We want to start with the blue slips. Well, uh, Mr. Chair, let's uh, go through the agenda here, th and that'll. Right now, we just did public comment in general, and we still have approval of minutes to do, and then okay. we'll get to that. So, does anybody have any general uh, public comment not associated with any of the agenda items? Okay, I'll go ahead and close that. Um, we have the minutes here from the last meeting. Uh, Bonnie was here. Um, will any of our members uh, make a motion to approve the minutes? I make a motion to approve the minutes as read. Do you have a second? Uh, point of order, I wasn't here for these meetings. Uh, what is staff's opinion as to how I might participate in this? Uh, Commissioner uh, Langhorn, uh, Assistant City Attorney John Doyamus, you may approve the minutes even though you weren't here for the meeting. So you have right. the ability to do so. So if you want a second, so. I'll make that second then. I have read them. Okay. Mr. Chair, before you call the vote, um, there are two sets of minutes on the agenda. So let's be clear about which ones were uh, taking the motion on is it on both or just the May 3rd or May 17th? Let's clarify the, the question. Uh, it's both May 3rd and May 17th minutes. And we have a oh, motion and a motion. second. And is there any discussion on either one of those minutes? No, but I will clarify my motion. I was thinking of just the May 3rd, but I will include the May 17th also. Thank you for the amendment. Okay. Second. Thank you. All right. Any, dis any discussion on either of those minutes? As, as written and submitted. All right, let's go ahead and call the question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Unanimous. Aye. Do we have any announcements? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, items number two and number four on the agenda have asked to be heard at a later date. And it's possible that we might actually resolve those so they won't need a hearing. So today we will only be hearing item one and item three. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead and move on to item number one. Uh, coincidentally, there's several blue slips for item number one. Mr. Chair, I'll uh, provide my, s I'll stand by the staff report that's written, uh, including the memo um, amendment to the staff report that's dated May 30th, 2018. And I'd, I'd also like the fire marshal to come up because I have a feeling that uh, the fire marshal will be responding to some questions from okay. the board. So I'd like to invite Joe up. And Joe, I don't know, did you have anything you wanted to report um, or comment on before um, turning this over to the appellant? Wait till yeah, the fire marshal um, will wait until we have the public comment and the appellant's comments to respond. Okay, um, I think probably a, a good uh, good place to start is tallying up how many people are giving their minutes to someone else. That'll probably help. Um, yeah, m just a point of order, Mr. Chair. Um, so we've completed the first bulleted item under 316 uh, De La Guerra Terrace. So now we're at the um, appellant making a presentation, if they'd like. Um, 836 De La Guerra? Yes. Okay. Please. Can I address the yeah. Milan. <laughs> Let's press the middle button. Hello? Okay. My name is William Curran. Some of you may not know this, but some of you may. This is my third appearance before the board pertaining to this item. First time we appeared was on May 3rd. Got all our neighbors together, prepared to give our presentation. We sat through an hour and a half uh, 
discussion uh, at a, pr a previous presentation, and then after that we were informed that uh, because one of the members was recusing himself that we no longer had a quorum. <laughs> which presented a little bit of difficulty because in the meantime, as we weren't able to bring our appeal, the project is going steaming ahead. But the uh, city was kind enough, and Mr. Stuffer was kind enough to set a special meeting for us on the 17th. And uh, we, a couple, uh, at least Mr. Mah uh, Maloney was here at the time, and uh, we presented our, our case to the board and unanimously they found in our favor. We were very happy. <laughs> um, and then we found out uh, a few days later that um, the city was not going to uh, uphold our revocation of the appeal because of a snafu. Now, you can imagine how dispirited we were because um, we were told that uh, all matters pertaining to appeal were final. And uh, then we find out it's not final. Uh, I have to tell you that some of our uh, neighbors were very upset. They, some even thought that the city was conspiring against them. Uh, I <laughs> assured them that was not the case. And so here we are today. Um, I represent now 48 members, member, uh, neighbors in our neighborhood who are opposed to this ADU at 836 De La Guerra Terrace. We have several reasons for our appeal, which we'll go through. Um, for those of you who don't know our neighborhood, it's a neighborhood of single-family homes on a very narrow cul-de-sac uh, in the high fire zone. Uh, the street is under intense, uh, oh, shall, shall I wait because of, uh, no, no, is under, uh, incredible stress due to parking, which this ADU, of course, will only exacerbate because they're not asked to supply any uh, any parking. As you said, we are in the high fire zone. You can see our location there. Now, because we're only allowed to kind of address fire or building code violations, we have other concerns about this ADO, but so we'll just, I'll can restrain my <laughs> comments to those. As you can see, the first is the dimensions. Now, our street is 20 feet wide, and with cars parked along the side, that cuts off about five to seven feet. If you can see there, the, the second stone wall down there, if I can get, the, is where the location where the ADU is gonna be behind that. Now, as you can see, any car coming down one way and another car coming the other way, one car has to back up. And that's just the way things are on our street. Um, you can sometimes come up on, like, on a, on a Sunday morning and uh, it looks peaceful and, you know, looks, what's the problem? And then the next day it looks like uh, Dodger Stadium after a game. It's just, it's just crazy. The... Uh, as you can see, that when c cars are parked, it, it just it becomes impassable. Now, you can see in the, the high fire zone. We can see where the T fire and uh, where the, the Thomas. Now, some w with the with the the Thomas fire, there was time to get out, but sometimes these fires will, will break out, and there isn't going to be time for people to to uh, to make uh, an escape. And we're talking about our concerns are actually not just for De La Guerra Terrace, but for the houses on, on uh, APU above us. All the houses, anything fire breaks out, it's going to span the entire area. The other day, I was coming home, and there was a, like a tree trimming going on on, 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 on on APS. And the cars were backed up on both, both directions. And I sat in the car and I just wondered, if a fire broke out now, we're all just, we're all dead meat or we're just going to be running down the hill for our lives. Uh, now the turning radius it says it's supposed to be 70, 70 feet, ours is 60 feet, and in truth, any cars in the, in the cul-de-sac which are there all the time, nobody's going to be turning around. 
what happens is trucks back up on the street. And uh, you know, cul-de-sacs are historically areas that kids get to play. We have some kids who live in the area, but they can't play on the street. One kid was almost hit. And a family, because of that, has, has sold their house. Now, I hate this term of dead ends, but uh, you can see our, uh, our street is in excess of 300 feet. Now we come to what I consider the, the most important one of the, the fire codes, and that is that all walls of the house should be within 150 feet of the street. Now, as you can see up here, where I can get my little pointer here, that's where the ADU or proposed ADU is going to be. Now, everything above that blue line there is above 150 feet. Now, what's going to happen is you have a, a neighborhood which has all these houses along De La Guerra Terrace and then houses up on APS. And now they're proposing to plunk one right in the middle here, which is, uh, I believe, is very dangerous. Not only that, but they talk about that if the house is beyond, all the walls are beyond 150 feet, that there should be sprinklers. Well, this ADU is not going to have sprinklers. Also, the grade. I was talking to the fire department about this. Um, shouldn't exceed 16 degrees grade. Well, ours is 21. Our house is 24 degrees. So what we, in essence, have is had six out of six fire code violations in order to permit this ADU. It's going to be going behind this house here. Now, I, I want to uh, make something kind of clear. I'm not faulting the fire department, and I'm not faulting the city. We understand that it's the state law that they passed has basically big-footed the city and hamstrung decisions. Um, I mean, if, this, if, there, if there wasn't a, uh, a state law, this whole thing, I wouldn't be here, you wouldn't be here uh, discussing this matter because nobody would have allowed an ADU to be built there in the first place. Now, if we talk about an ADU, it's really kind of a misnomer, almost a joke, because this ADU is going to be 1,300 square feet from the ground up, two stories. The house in front of it is 1,254 square feet. So in essence, what's going to happen is the house in front is going to become the ADU. There's nothing additional, uh, a dwelling unit with this item. It's going to be on a slope which is 24 degrees, two stories. It's going to tower over the neighborhood. This is the largest one that's been uh, going to be built in the Lower Riviera. Uh, we don't believe, the thing is, we're not against ADUs. We believe this, this, this one that's proposed might be perfect in, in another area, but we believe it's not perfect here. Um, now, let's talk a little bit about our area. We are not just in the high fire zone, we're in the very high fire hazard severe zone. The, uh, understand that term, that term is not given out easily. Santa Barbara encompasses a lot of the, the very high fire severe zone, and most of it in Santa Barbara is in the Riviera. Now, the city is aware of, of, uh, of these problems, I'm sure. I mean, in their ordinance, 5779, they go through all the different risks that, uh, that this, this area is under. Extreme drying vegetation, drought and low humidity predisposes area to large destructive fires. There's flood conditions. There's uh, overtaxed water supply, a rapid spread of even small fires need for sprinkler systems in place. 
the narrow roads in the foothills vulnerable to emergency conditions, fire department response time at risk, and the Southern California Earthquake Center predicts, predicts an 80 to 90 percent probability of a 7.0 magnitude earthquake by 2024. And if that happens, then fires and everything goes on. Now we believe that this ADU is unsafe, where it is. The size, the placement, a hazard to a neighbors on all sides, most of the neighbors have been, have been evacuated multiple times. And, and why do I think it's unsafe? Because the city believes it's unsafe. Up until a few months ago, they had a blanket that no homes would be built in this area, no ADUs in this area. Then some, maybe some, let's say some pressures came to bear and they relaxed their, uh, their position. But in the co new code that they've come out with, this ADU would not be able to be built in the manner it is being built now. It would not be able to be two stories. It would not be 1,200 or 13, uh, 25 square feet. It would have to be no more than 1,000 square feet. And importantly to us, no variance or modification of any fire code requirements. Now, okay. One of the things I have in the handout is, uh, which I want to draw your attention to, is in the street file of the gentleman who is building this ADU, he proposes the valuation of this ADU at $180,000. And this is including all of the abatement of the violations which has been, been in place for about four and a half years. Now, we kind of wonder, we know what the basic kind of square foot <laughs> the m is about uh, three to maybe five hundred dollars a square foot, so we're kind of <laughs> alarmed and scared that somebody would propose to build an ADU in the fire, high fire zone for somewhere around a hundred dollars a square foot. Now, this gentleman who wants to do this is not a long-term neighbor. I mean, if it, if it was a long-term neighbor, we might have been able to work s some things out. First time I met him was when he bought the house four and a half years ago. Seemed a nice gentleman. He was actually an improvement over the, <laughs> the previous tenant. Um, there was a lot of remodeling going on, a lot of noise, a lot of disruption. I went over to talk to him and uh, he said, oh, no, 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 we're going I'm moving my family in here and we're going to be here, we're going to be your neighbors for a long time. And so, you know, I said, fine, great. We, we, we cut some slack for him, and there were a lot of vi kind of violations in the backyard and stuff, stuff which, which had, you know, I don't want to kind of go into it, but I said, we can kind of deal with that over the, over the terms as neighbors do over, over time. Well, as soon as the house was fixed up, he was gone. The house was rented out. A property manager had taken over, and we haven't seen this man again until February of, uh, of this year when he's come to oversee the building of this ADU. Now, some of the neighbors think that this is property is being getting ready to flip. The, the, the inexpensiveness of the, of the ADU, the, that there was a New York trust that, uh, that, that owns the property, but whatever things, that will come out. But the thing is, what we're talking about today is a remedy. How do we remedy this? Now, we understand the, si the state law put the city in a bind, but it also gave you discretion regarding fire safety, health safety, fire safety. We asked that, uh, you know, this has been kind of a stealth ADO because one of the things the state put in their law is you didn't have to let neighbors know what was going on which we think is very <laughs> unfair. So I didn't find out about this until February after the paperwork was already in, I, I, in order. And the neighbors, we've done everything we can to try and uh, to, 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 to make our concerns voiced. We've been to every city council meeting. We've met with every member of the city council. We've sent emails and photographs and questions um, we've been, I guess, actually been kind of pests, <laughs> but there's been no venue for us to, to bring our, our case. 
this is our final and only venue to actually have something done about repealing the permit on this property. Now, neighbors, we believe, you can see there's quite a turnout of our neighbors, believe that we have to have a say-so regarding the safety of our neighborhoods. Santa Barbara is a city of neighborhoods, not kind of independent contractors. Some of us, some of the neighbors have lived here for generations. I mean, generation and generations, they grew up here. Um, they pay taxes for years. And all of a sudden, to not have any say-so on what goes on in your neighborhood, I think, is criminal. Now, I understand, yes, we need housing, but I don't think development at the sake of safety is what we want to do. Also, if this thing is approved or, or allowed to go through, you're going to have an ADU, which no <laughs> other ADU in Santa Barbara is going to be allowed to be built like this. This is going to be a sore thumb. This is going to be something which no, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be an outlier. And uh, so we're going to have this thing kind of like a sort of Damocles over our heads for the, for the, the rest of our lives. And uh, it's, we feel it's unfair, unsafe, and we want you to kind of help us out here. Um, now, we're not unreasonable. I'm not unreasonable. I think this gentleman should have his ADU. He's put in his time. He's gone through the, the way he sh was asked to do it. But we ask that it be p downsized to fall into the Santa Barbara ordinance. Now, a point of order, Mr. Chair. Are we the agenda allows five minutes. I know there are a lot of people who would probably donate their time or give their time. So are, are, are I'm you comfortable almost with the time. Yeah, we are. I've okay. got several here that yeah. have donated their yeah. time okay. as well. So now, We're still good. Now the thing is, is that I'm, 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 it's, this is my big wrap up here. Um, the question is how, and that's already been hammered out at the last meeting, Mr. Maloney, along with. Marcia Siles and two other gentlemen worked out a way in order to um, remedy this, to make it fall under the, uh, the Santa Barbara ADU ordinance. And I ask, only ask, that you ratify or whatever the process is what happened in our last meeting. And uh, I think that's the, and you, you, you also brought up two other uh, cases which I never even asked about. Talking about the retroactiveness and uh, and I think something to do with the fire fire department. And I said, I, 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 sir, I as I said, this is not this was the only venue we had was to, to talk about the fire and there were some codes and we we just wa I wanted to wanted to bring it up. I th I think maybe there's some other people have something to maybe add to this. I thank you for your time and uh, thank thanks very much. And we'll now open it up to public comment. Mr. Chair, before you at, uh, call the first person up, I just wanted to bring to the board's attention that we included three emails that were sent to us today. Uh, one was from Joan Kent, another from Brett Warner, and another from Sarah Semigan. So I just want to confirm that all the board members received copies of those. Yeah. And also, yes. at, um, at today's meeting, we, someone submitted to us the uh, this. Uh, advisory or, or opinion with, uh, I think in the back of it is also an email, it looks like, from Megan Sharma um, that might have been submitted. So just want you to be aware of those. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. All the board members have those emails? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And, 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 and just uh, double checking. Uh, excuse me one second. Uh, uh, Commission, I mean, uh, Chair Maloney and members of the Board of Appeals, Assistant City, Assistant City Attorney John Doimus, Uh I don't know if the property owner is here or not, but at this point, since the appellant raised his argument, uh, they should also be allowed to counter any argument. So this would be the appropriate juncture for them. I to agree. Respond. Somebody was raising their hand in the back. Um, yep. Uh, please come forward. Yeah. Here. 
Thank you. Please make sure your microphone's on and state your name for the record. Yeah, my name is uh, Abraham Cohen. I'm the owner of the property at 836 De La Guerra Terrace. And I'm surprised that all this s scenario that is happening here, I, I was not aware of all this controversy against the, pro the ADU I'm building. And as time goes by, I hear more and more controversies. And I heard Mr. Coram here say so many lies that I inside, I, I, I just, I don't know what to say. How in the world does he know what is my budget? I am a millionaire. I can buy him. And he's telling me I'm building an ADU that he's gonna be ashamed of or is unsafe to him. For your information, I'm building an ADU that Santa Barbara is gonna be proud of. ADUs by definition are supposed to be shacks, but I'm building a very, very attractive ADU in design and in quality. In fact, my tiles on the top, my architect says, don't spend the money on tiles, just build it with the cheapest asphalt. And I said, no, I want to build a pretty structure that is gonna match the the neighborhood that it deserves, okay? Uh, talking about, talking about that I am an investor and that I, uh, I just sold the house in New York uh, about th in February and I came here. I knew that I was going to build an ADU because my daughter wants to live with me. And uh, we told her that we're gonna build ne a structure next to our house and we discussed this issue with one of the architects in the city, and because the, the amount of ADU that was allowed was like 600 square feet, my daughter said, I'm not coming on a 600 square feet home. So we then decided to build a detached ADU, and we went through all the procedures. I know nobody in Santa Barbara as far as having any connections to, you know, to, to do me a favor. Nobody has done me a favor. I went through all the appropriate, I, I hired an architect, I hired a civil engineer. I mean, the house is built so solid that I don't think that the gentleman's house is built with this criteria. Uh, Mr. Coram uh, looks like I am a criminal. Uh, I mean, he feels that he, is more, he has more rights than me because he has lived in the house since Whenever he came, I don't know, it's not even his house. I don't see any place that he owes the house, but that's irrelevant. I'm not gonna go out of my way to, to say s things that he mentions, like especially what, that I have only $180,000 to spend on this. First of all, how does he know how much my budget he has checked? He has checked my bank account now? I mean, he has done a lot of things. He has been harassing me. He has been taking pictures of the workers, uh, digging on there. He's asking questions. He complained that I had some firewood that had been there for the last, I don't know how many years. He complained that it was touching his fence, which he claims that he built. I don't know if he built the fence, but that's irrelevant to me. And I told him, I'm gonna take care of this when time comes that we're gonna clean over all the, the property. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, I, I didn't even want to talk in here because I have done nothing wrong. I just went through the law. I hired, as I said, I hired the proper people to build a house for my family. Uh, you know, it looks to me like I'm being treated as a criminal. And this is very sad. I feel so unwelcomed. Uh, you know, I am a newcomer, uh, and I, all the neighbors are like looking at me as if I've done something wrong. Uh, I wanted to be friends. I went to Mr. Coram. I told him, why is he so much against me? Let's be friends. And I pleased him, and he told me that he's gonna think about it. Wow, you know. What can I say? I, I really don't know why you brought me to this stand because I, you know, I have 40 people against me. 
I, what is there for me to say? That what? That I'm building an ADU that is not allowed. That I, I am an investor, I am a trust that is building something to flip. Uh, you know, the laws of ADU are laws of the state or of the city ordinance uh, coming in. Uh, I don't know why these people cannot accept the fact that I am building an ADU based on a state law. Whatever the state law says, this is what has been built. Again, I have no finger on this. The architect designed the structure for me. I have no input. So, and as I said before, the fact that I'm speaking here is because you forced me to speak. Otherwise, I would be standing there and just keeping quiet and laughing at the lies of the things these people are saying. You know, he, may, you know, he said before that the street is 20 feet wide. The street is 25 feet wide. I just wanted the measurement because I read one of the things that it was a complaint from the, the neighborhood that the street was 20 feet. The street is 25 feet wide. I measured the distance from, from the street to my end of the ADU, and it was 151 foot distance to the end of the house. Uh, so I don't know where they got these pictures. I don't know how. They, they didn't come to my house to measure. So how do they know all this information that they, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, so. As I said, I, I have gone through, I have spent a lot of money for this project. I sold my house because I, I was under the, uh, not under the impression, because I knew that the ADU was going to go through because my architect said that it is no issue whatsoever. We're going to build it and we're going to come in when uh, the thing is uh, approved. And I went through a lot of changes. I paid a lot of money to the architect, as I said, to the, to the soil engineer, et cetera, et cetera. So to stop this project at this stage for me is going to be like a disaster. Uh, you know, I don't know what rights I have. I haven't contacted. I don't know if I should have contacted any attorney because it's a strange situation, you know. I, uh, who is going, I mean, who is my friend and who is my enemy? I, I you know, so that's all I can say. I, I have, what can I say? I, if you decide, I mean, whoever is in charge, that you stop this project, as I said, I don't know what I'll do. I am just completely out. Uh, unless Mr. Corum is going to take all the expenses that I spent up to now and cover up for me. Uh, out of all the neighborhood put, put money on the side. And again, I did not do anything against the law. I'm going, I went through the proper channels. So I, I don't know why the neighborhood is fighting the government. The government makes the decisions for, for the city and for, for its citizens. It's not. I mean, the neighborhood, if they have uh, objections, they can discuss it and see what the city can do. But under th in this situation, they claim that they are not against the ADUs. Well, they are against the ADU. Their problem is the ADU, it's not my structure. My structure is going to be a beautiful structure. Perhaps Mr. Coram is going to end in my structure when it's done. So uh, all the arguments that he has, I think it's like, he is obsessed with this. I don't know. It, it's, it looks like he is really obsessed with the idea that the guy next to him that is an out of stater that doesn't belong to to the community of Santa Barbara is building something that he doesn't like or he he wished that wasn't there, and he is you know pursuing a path to stop my project. And I hope you consider the fact for me that I've gone through a lot of hardship to go through for, I started this project about one year ago uh, with the idea of building an ADU and it's now a year and a half and I'm still in the beginning stage. Uh, so uh, please consider my situation. If you are me, what, what would you do? 
so uh, that's all I can say. Uh, Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Mr. Chair, we had a, a note from the director upstairs that um, I guess, and I heard it a while ago, but I don't hear it now. Oh, there's the dog that was in distress in the out in the parking lot. Uh -huh. So uh, if, hey, if hey, turn it up. yeah, um, if you hear we hear it again, it's, it disturbs the staff and what have you. So just maybe go out and take care of it. But I don't I don't hear it right now. So I, I don't. Yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, let's go ahead and move on to public comment. Uh, we'll start with the blue sheets of paper here. We have uh, Jay Patrick O'Hara. Would you like to say anything? Come up to the microphone, please. If I may, I'd like to donate my initial health insurance because I'm paying okay. for this position. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Um, Vince Doral. Um, I'm fine. I have nothing to say. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what's your name? Uh, Got you right here. Um, please come forward and take the microphone. You got Olga too. Okay. So you get officially two times three, but just pl yeah, please go for it. Good afternoon. Oh, I'll make the mic work here. Hang on here for a second. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? No? It is on. Am I good? Okay. Yeah, my name is uh, Miles Barrett. I live at 845 De La Guerra Terrace, which is roughly across the street from the project. Um, I want to bring something else to the board's attention other than the fire issue. I think it's significant, and I only learned about it this last weekend. This project has pulled 10 11-yard Marburg construction dumpsters full of dirt out of the project. And that's over 100 yards of dirt, which is more than double the 43.9 yards of grading that's stated in the application. Had the, application, had, had the applicant been honest about his intended earthwork, he would have been required to submit a grading plan, a soils report, some sort of engineering review, and none of that was done. In addition, according to the city's all activity summary, in November of 2017, Brenda Belts, associate planner from zoning and enforcement, re required, and this is on page two, paragraph nine of the summary, quote, clearly explain provide photos or diagrams to show how the grading will be permitted. Indicate quantity of as-built grading cut and fill. If over 50 cubic yards design review approval by the single family design board, SFDB, is required. Again, in February of 2018, Ms. Belt stated, and this is on page four, paragraph five of the summary, if, quote, if more than 50 cubic yards, SFDB approval is required. Moreover, in that same report, in October of 2017, Aaron Markey, Creek's Restoration Planner, required, and that's on page one, paragraph one, quote, this project is required to comply with tier, tier three post-construction stormwater requirements if discretionary review, I period, E period, design review is required. Well, we now know that 100 yards have been pulled out from the project, and according to Brenda Belts, design review by SFDB should have been performed. And according to Aaron Markey, the project should have complied with tier three post-construction stormwater requirements, but because the applicants, because of the applicant's gross underestimation of his intended work, none of this was done. This project violates existing fire codes in a high fire zone 
as what Will was saying, there's no grading plan, no soils report, no engineering review, no SFDB design review, no tier three post-construction stormwater compliance. And to top it all off, it is in direct violation of the city's accessory dwelling unit ordinance, which is now in place. I mean, it not only violates the ordinance, it flaunts it with a 28 foot tall, two story building perched on a hillside behind a single story primary dwelling. I'm urging this board to not only revoke this permit, but because of the application's material misstatements and the lack of required review that an honest application would have necessitated, I'm urging you to deem this application as incomplete, require that the applicant resubmit, and if you are able to do that, hopefully, thankfully, the project would be required to abide by the guidelines and protections of the ADU ordinance that is now in place. Now, if you're not 100% convinced that this is not the appropriate action, I would ask you to take this under submission. Go up there. See what this guy's trying to do. Envision the 28-foot-high 28 uh, 28 two-story building. Put yourself in the shoes of the neighbors on either side of the project. Put yourself in the shoes of the neighbor that is behind the project. Put yourself in the shoes of all of these other neighbors that have grave concerns about the impact this project will have on their neighborhood. If you do that, I challenge you to be able to say to yourself, yeah, this is okay. Because I'm willing to bet that if you do that, put yourself in our shoes, you would be right here, right now, begging for your help because you are the first body that we've been able to express our concerns. You are the first reviewing body that we've been able to lay out our, our problems with this project. We need your help. Please help us. Take action. Make this project comply with the ADU ordinance. That's all we've asked from the very beginning. That's all we're asking for now. You have the power to make that happen, and we urge you, please, exercise that power. Thank you. Thank you, Miles. We have uh, Kyle Butterwick. Would you like to come forward? Yeah, Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, board members. Uh, <clears throat> my name's Kyle Butterwick, and incidentally, my wife, Linda, I believe had noted that she was going to assign her three minutes to me as well, if that's possible, two minutes? But yeah, we got okay. her, she didn't say that, but we've got her here. Okay. <clears throat> we are uh, proud uh, new uh, homeowners uh, in Santa Barbara. We're very excited about uh, residing in this beautiful community. Uh, we live at 822 De La Guerra Terrace. Uh, we've been in the neighbor for neighborhood for about uh, two weeks, so we um, have just learned about um, the circumstances here. And, and I can tell you from my perspective, I have had a very long career in city government. I was a director of community development for several cities in Orange County for uh, over 25 years, and I am very familiar with the debate and the issues associated with uh, these dwelling units. They're not unique to Santa Barbara. Uh, <clears throat> what I can tell you are my observations at this point, and I have talked to a number of neighbors and have done a certain amount of research at <clears throat> it's a very disturbing of, in, in my viewpoint, of sort of process and situation that has occurred to date here. Uh, I won't take the time to reiterate, I think, the very important comments already expressed by other neighbors, but what, <clears throat> re re what resonates with me in particular is this is a neighborhood that has <clears throat> this dis uh, designation of a very high fire hazard area. Of, and is combined with the reality of a very substandard 
marginalized best uh, emergency access road system leading to this particular property. And <clears throat> I think most reason reasonable people would conclude that that truly is a recipe for a, a disaster. Um, you know, there are other characteristics that I have noticed about uh, this particular property uh, that have been commented to some extent here. Uh, it's a very steep slope. It has very heavy vegetation and fuel loading. Uh, the fact of the matter that the accessory building is situated behind the, the primary unit um, would certainly suggest to me that it is inherently problematic to provide fire apparatus and fighting equipment um, to this relatively remote location. Uh, <clears throat> when I put these things together, uh, uh, it seems like a very troublesome scenario. <clears throat> From my experience is also that when the city reviews a project that uh, presents potentially adverse environmental effects or uh, jeopardizes the public health and safety. There are provisions um, that are allowed by the government code uh, and the California Environmental Quality Act, which I'm sure you have, uh, have been informed in the past, and that is uh, usually in the form of uh, either a developer and or a property owner has some obligation to attempt to mitigate or minimize uh, impacts that might result from their project. Uh, <clears throat> and in, in this case, I have not heard of, of any really feasible mitigation that could help address uh, and minimize these impacts. And uh, in my opinion, that's another reason of why this project is <clears throat> just uh, really infeasible, inappropriate, uh, <clears throat> given the circumstances are, that are unique to the application. Um, I have heard for the first time uh, just now the comments from the previous speaker uh, about um, the possible deviation from the construction design plans, which uh, is a truly a disturbing scenario. I have, have uh, experienced that situation on too many occasions. Um, <clears throat> I would certainly urge the board uh, and the city in general to uh, immediately initiate an investigation of the scope and magnitude of uh, the work that has occurred there to date uh, to ensure that, in fact, it is consistent with the plans that have been approved by the city. Uh, furthermore, I can tell you as a nearby resident that con construction is uh, occurring um, you know, eight to 10 hours a day. The applicant is moving very, very fast on this. Uh, that is problematic in my estimation, especially given what I'm hearing tonight about possible uh, discrepancies in the construction plans and, in addition, the, uh, you know, the uncertainty about the status fundamentally of this particular permit. Uh, I'm frankly surprised the city has not issued a stop work order on this property uh, until uh, the agency um, uh, learns more about the details of what has occurred here and until this particular process here has been finally resolved. Uh, <clears throat> in summary, I would urge this board um, uh, to uh, just flat out deny this application. Uh, I think it's a dangerous precedent uh, for the community. Uh, the location is entirely inappropriate. I can tell you in the cities of Laguna Beach and Dana Point, where I was a director for many years, this application would have not got first base, honestly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Maureen Duris. Sure. Unless somebody else wants that, then we have to figure that out. <laughs> uh, James J. Knight. Okay, thank you. Sally, Sally Kendall. Lindsay Baker. I'm Lindsay Baker speaking for myself today. 
I have been, for the last several years, attending meetings regarding housing in Santa Barbara. That w is including the um, initial meeting that Sheila Lodge spearheaded looking at AUDs. I have attended the housing task, affordable housing task force meetings, the planning commissions, and the Santa Barbara City Councils regarding ADUs and ADUs and AUDs. Um, I have lived at 835 De La Guerra Terrace since 1970. That's almost 48 years. We have as already been referred to, had many fires that we've had to evacuate for. The um, Sycamore Canyon fire, we, um, no one's mentioned today that we are on a high fuel can uh, canyon. And during the Sycamore fire, that fire was headed towards si uh, this canyon. It also jumped De La Guerra, it was starting to jump De La Guerra. It did jump APS and burned a home on the lower side of APS before the wind changed at two o'clock in the morning and saved the rest of Santa Barbara. So we are in a high fire, extreme high fire area. Also, flood, flood does not seem to be possible in this area. However, we did experience um, at least a two, maybe three foot high flood that came behind the homes on De La Guerra Terrace and came down between my house and the house to my east of my house. So the water, the, the, there has to be stormwater mitigation at this site. I would like to also um, second all the previous speakers' points and I don't have to repeat those points today. So I would like to um, also mention that when Mr. Cohen moved in, I went to his home and introduced myself as a neighbor. And on the next occasion I went to his home, I wanted to tell him that his construction people were parking in front of the fire hydrant. And he, his comment was, well, who are you? And I just came to find out that he wanted to red stripe the street in front of my home without any neighbor input, and I said to him, why didn't you come and talk to us as the neighbors before you went to the city to try to red stripe the street so you have more access to your property? Thank you for listening. Thank you. I believe those are all the blue slips. Is there anyone else who hasn't turned one in that would like to speak? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close public comment. Oh, oh, sorry, oh I'm sorry, I forgot we had Miss uh, Miss Duris and I forgot. I'm sorry. The uh, other speaker who uh, was the seated. I think the last one we have is Miss. Was I know it's Miss Dur. Yes. Yeah, that's the last one. Okay. Thank sorry you. about that. Yes. Hi. My name is Maureen Duris. I'm the attorney for the appellants, and. Um, Personal vitriol and attacks aside, I'd just like to note for the record that Mr. Cohen did not address, nor could he refute, that fire code violations exist. Uh, I urge you to find in favor of uh, the appellants, revoke the permit, scale it back, whatever you deem appropriate, but please protect these people. Thank you. So I don't forget anybody. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Good. She was going to be last, so that worked out. I'll go ahead and close public comment now. Um, we have a standing motion to uphold the decision of the chief building official, but in our last meeting, we overturned the decision of the chief building official. Right. Yes, uh, Chairman Maloney and members of the Board of the Appeal, if I can address a couple of things in terms of your deliberation. Not to at all influence, for the record, and not to influence all your decisions, but just to give some guiding procedural points of view. Number one is, uh, for the record, please do not consider the past hearing. The past hearing is null and void. Um, this is a brand new hearing, a brand new hearing to deliberate on, to make the record clean. I would um, have you deliberate on what was presented from you, 
uh, any points of view from the appellant or, or the petitioner, in this case, the property owner. And the basis for that is that um, it's to protect the decision of this Board of Appeals. Uh, there was not notice given to the property owner in the uh, uh, past hearing. Uh, that could be deemed uh, a fatal error if it was appealed. And uh, the property owner has a right to exhaust its administrative remedies if it's not given notice to. I could see a court easily overturning it on that and not the merits of that. So that's been corrected. Um, so what's happened in the past stays in the past is focus on here and today in the hearing before you today. Uh, that's item one I wanted to mention. Uh, item two I want to discuss is uh, also to apologize uh, that I should have spoke earlier that the issue should be basically uh, the hearing before you today. So any public comment about people's personalities and all that, that should be stricken. Um, and I should have spoke up on that, not to allow something like that to occur. Uh, the other point of view here, too, is your appeal is final. Uh, it is the appeal of the chief building official. That's the sole issue before you. Um, the jurisdiction of this issue is whether to uphold or deny the permit issued by the chief building official. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, whether to uphold or deny the building a permit by the chief uh, building official. That's the only issue before. No, no other remedy has been given. You're also, your decision is final. So it's a unique uh, power you have compared to other boards or commissions in the city that there is no appeal to the city council. It's before you today and it's a final decision. Does not mean a writ can't be taken and filed in superior court, but it's a final decision. Uh, and just a caution also in terms of to look at the evidence before you as presented. Uh, there may have been some other comments and that is up for you to decide, but if there's no evidence presented of it, just to be caution of it. You know, many people can make comments in public comment about certain facts and all that, but I just caution you to just um, use your discretion looking what's before you. That's all I have. Thank you. And if any questions for me, thank you. Um, I do have a point of order. Sure. Um, one of the questions that I have, and I'm sure other board members do, is regarding um, the fire aspects uh, um, and claims by the appellant about uh, fire issues. Um, is it appropriate now to hear from Absol the Absolutely, people? absolutely, because right now is a deliberation questioning part. Absolutely. You can Great. ask any questions um, of Mr. Poirier. So I guess um, toward that, Joe, do you have anything you can add on? Uh, Chair Maloney and uh, members of the commission, I think I have some things to add to it. Um, first of all, uh, there's been a lot of talk about whether or not this meets the fire code. Um, and I'm going to have to take issue with that claim. Uh, we had a, a plan checker who he is an experienced person who plan reviewed this plan, and I just came from the archives and looked at the plan myself, and we measure 150 feet. But even if it were 165 feet, that's well within the discretionary uh, review allowed for any individual plan reviewer. Um, you know, they have to have some kind of latitude for things like how far can an engine company advance up that driveway. Um, but it's all based on their, their view of the plans at the time they're looking at them. But in any case, um, when we, we reviewed the plan, the 151 feet is what we come up with. So, and let me just express this also. And I think a lot of you have been at the many hearings that we've had over the ADU ordinance. And as somebody else was saying earlier, this is not a new thing, particularly on the Riviera. In my 35 years here, um, this comes up again and again and again. And one of the things that always comes up is the width of the city streets. There's very little um, that city council is willing to do about the width of the city streets, in my experience. Um, and granted, your street is not a city standard street. And that can be a problem. It can also be a benefit in some communities. But I also have never received, in my memory, a single complaint or parking um, violation on the street. If there are parking violations on the street, those can be addressed in another way. Um, we have in the past uh, um, taken streets that, because the neighborhood has come out in the Riviera and said, we have a parking problem up here, you know, it's constricting the access on the street. We can, we're working with transportation and the police department, sign those streets and make it a no parking zone. That's a doable thing. And if, and if, and if that access problem is currently going on, um, we would be interested in knowing about it. Uh, and, and it takes the neighborhood. I mean, you have to come out and tell us. If, we, if there's a parking problem, we have to know. Um, so, you know, if, if it needs to be a no parking zone, that's 
that's an entirely different issue than ADUs. Um, by the same token, we can't address things like how many stories, how much grading is going on. The, the fire department has no purview in those areas. We apply the fire code. And, and I think I've expressed this in numerous hearings also in that I don't think anybody is more sensitive to high fire hazard areas, uh, particularly in my 35 years, than I am. Um, you know, the, the reason I'm familiar with the ordinance you were reading earlier is because I wrote it. The, the, ex the, the problem with the Riviera is that you know, we do have a high fire hazard zone. It's not the extreme zone. The extreme foothill zone is above you. This is the foothill zone. Um, and, and all, but all of it's high fire. You know, you have to build a high fire construction standards. This ADU is planned for high fire construction standards. Um, so, you know, there, there are certain provisions, but before the fire department, at least from, you know, a, an individual plan review point of view, can discriminate against a homeowner, we have to have a fire-related reason. And we don't here. And the applicant, um, when they submitted their plans, it was reviewed. Uh, it went around twice, I think, and, and uh, it was not only approved by the fire department, but other city divisions, and that's how we ended up with a valid permit. Um, but uh, if you want to look at the larger aspect, and we talked to the city council about this as well, and this is wholly separate from an individual homeowner. If you want to look at the entire Riviera or the high fire hazard area and create a program or a plan for a different type of discretionary review, um, the fire department would be happy to participate in that kind of thing. And we've told city council this in the past, um, but it would be with the participation of zoning, building, public works, and all other city divisions that may have an interest. And it would also cost some money, uh, maybe even an EIR, but it, would, but it would be a study where we'd have a, a matrix, and uh, the matrix would say, okay, under these certain conditions, under the, this type of slope and this type of road width, and, and you could add all of those things together and say, does it meet the matrix? And if it doesn't, then you, then you exclude it. But we're not there. I mean, then, and to discriminate against an individual homeowner right now, is not, uh, we, we don't have the criteria. We don't have the code to back us up and we don't have the ability to do that. It may be a good thing. It may be a study that, uh, that the city wants to get into, but um, it's never been done and we're not there now. Uh, so in short, basically this, this ADU under the government code meets the high fire hazard. Uh, and, and incidentally, there was one other thing about the square footage. Um, the way the plans read now, it's 1,200 square feet. And as long as they satisfy building division plan reviewers about the square footage and what they're claiming the square footage is, then that's, that satisfies it for everybody because that's the purview of the building division. Um, for the record, what was your name? So anyway, in, in terms of the access, uh, and, I, and I have to go back to this parking thing again. If, if there's a problem, I would ask you um, to give us a call. We have. And, and we'll, I've never received one. No, but, well, excuse, excuse me, excuse me, may, uh, may I? Right now, the public comment is closed. So it is just the deliberation of the Board of Appeals and if they ask staff questions. Otherwise, if we, and I, I understand the frustrations, if we start opening up the public, this thing will drag on. It could get very heated. That's why we had. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Pub pub public comment has been closed. So that that is the that is a no that is the process. I I, I I understand, but it's between the commission right now. I mean it's between the board of appeals and the staff that this public comment is closed for this point. So there's not a deliberation back out to the audience. So I, I understand frustration, but uh, it, we are trying to keep an orderly meeting. So I hope you understand that. Thank you.
Charles, did you make the point that the concept of present employment wasn't conceded in your amended brief? That point is at page 16 in the blue brief. I'm sorry. Okay. In spite of the fact that public comment is closed, I'm just going to address this one last time. Okay. We're talking about a permanent no parking zone. Okay. The, these individual things, a construction truck coming and going, not our purview. Um, and allowed under the code because a construction truck has to have room to work. Okay. So forget th the temporary things. We're talking about a permanent forever no parking zone. That's what we're talking about. If that's the desire of the neighborhood, We'll work with transportation and we'll work with the police department and we have, but we have to get that. That's, it's not an easy thing to do, but we can do it. And, and that would be a legitimate red curb. That would be a red curb up and down the street with no parking signs and all that. That's, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about individual construction trucks or anything like that. Okay, so, and, and I'm gonna have to honor the city attorney's request here and close public comment. Thank you, Joe. Um, do any of the board members have a question for the appellant, appellant, for Mr. Kern? Any yeah. questions on what he spoke to? Any uh, clarification of anything? Uh, I have a question for staff. Uh, we'll get to that next. Okay. Let's just make sure everybody's, Ms. Ken? No, uh, no nothing right now. Okay. Just thinking, wow, yeah, it's okay. good. Questions for staff? Uh, what is the age class of this community, this cul-de-sac community? I, I guess my question is to leads to how old are these houses in this existing non-conforming condition relative to the roads that were built? I mean, the fire code came about in the mid-70s. The houses probably were built somewhere shortly thereafter. Uh, well, somebody please answer then. I've asked the question. In the 30s. All I, I, he can ask. He can ask Will. Yes. Beautiful houses. Mr. Curran, if you come up to the microphone oh, okay. so we can get Stay you there on the record. Yes. yes. So we showed two of them in the in the first uh, thing there. They're, they're Delfonso, and there's others down the street. I mean, the, the, it's uh, older, <laughs> older houses. Okay. I I just needed to know how old the structures were relative to the infrastructure that they serve, okay. that, that serves them. Any other questions? Anybody else? Yes. Sure. Uh, as I see it, there's three issues that have been here before, you know, today, and I'm just picking this up yesterday. Everybody else here has a big head start on me. Uh, but based on what the city attorney yes, said, that's a good yes. thing. Yes. Yeah. Point is, uh, the first one was fire, and uh, I believe I have the information I need uh, to address that. The second one is the amount of grading that was done. And there's one statement, and then I've read another statement. And I'm not sure which you know belongs here, but I do need some context for that. And then the third thing is the height and area issues uh, relative to the site. And I just want to make sure I'm clear as to what those standards are and where the built or the as to be built conditions ref reflect on that. Hey, Mr. Chair and uh, board members. Um, the, as far as the grading goes, uh, we have a declaration on the building permit application um, and in the plans of the estimated amount of grading that was going to be done. We also uh, sent staff out into the field, myself and one of our senior building inspectors, to go out and estimate the amount of grading. It was a gross estimation um, using no special tools other than a level um, and a calculator. Um, the, and we found that it was, the grading was within the ballpark, within five or ten cubic yards of what they had estimated based on our estimates. Um, then um, if, if someone has proof that there were 10 or more roll off containers filled with dirt that were removed and proof would be photographs of individual containers or th the board could ask the property owner to provide um, slips from the hauler to that document how much grading was uh, removed from the site or hauled away. Um, that those would be valid ways to, for us to have evidence to be able to say, ah, we, we, there's been work done that did not comply with the approved plans. So um, that's how we would have to respond to the grading, how we have responded to it and how we would have to respond to it um, from this point forward. Um, relative to the building areas and the calculation, uh, the addition of building areas, um, 
I, I could, I'm, I don't see Lonnie Cassidy, our plan check supervisor here anymore, but um, a as anyone who's been involved in development knows, depending on which section of the uh, of a code or ordinance you're looking at, you calculate the square footage of the building in different ways. So without getting into that uh, education session of how zoning measures uh, square footage, how building and safety does, we looked at this application in accordance with this California building code. And we assured that uh, and confirmed that the building area was within the limits that the state law allowed. It is it is a maximum application. They, this is they were not. This application is not uh, one where we had um, 100, 200 square feet of of difference between the maximum and what they were proposing. They proposed up to the the maximum that they could. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Um, I have one. Um, one of the other topics that was brought up uh, was stormwater. Um, has that been looked at, and is that a, an issue that we should be concerned with? Uh, Mr. Chair, stormwater um, is some the stormwater pollution prevention program of the city is has a trigger to it, and the trigger is discretionary review. So, um, for example, if the board were to ask for uh, proof of the amount of grading that was hauled away or earth that was hauled away and it turned out to be more than 50 cubic yards, a grading permit would be required. That would trigger single family design board review, which would then, trigger. being discretionary, would then allow the stormwater pollution prevention program to be applied. Thank you. Marcia, do you have any? Mr. Kearns, um, it, it's on. Okay, uh, Mr. Curran, um, basically your um, submittal addresses the fire uh, at code, at, you know, aspects of the, the project, the impact that they feel uh, is important to their site. And then you haven't addressed. Uh, I wondered if you had any other. Uh, is this appropriate to ask of him? I. I didn't know if you had any other construction uh, things which would have impacted the site that, that have come up during well, this time to add uh, to. The, the gentleman mentioned, when, through some kind of cast aspersions, when I mentioned the thing about $180,000, uh, it is in his street file. This isn't a figure that I kind of uh, invented. Um, we think that that is grossly uh, you know, under what the what it should be, so that should fall under the the building code. We, there, there were, I mean, there were violations in, in, in on this property which goes back f uh, four and a half years, which were, I guess, the city just thought that they weren't they could just roll them into this this permit. Um, the the Mr. Cohen ignored the city for uh, with regards to putting a new lateral in on the ho house until the, the house flooded three times. Um, we we. I only addressed fire issues because I thought that's all I was kind of allowed to. Um, the n every neighbor has a certain kind of different spin on this, but I guess to cut to, t to cut to the, the the chase, so to speak. We think he can have his ADU, but it should fall within the Santa Barbara uh, ordinance. We can live with one story. We can live with a thousand square feet. We can live with uh, the the no variance for the fire things. I mean, the fire code. I mean, I, I respect your work, sir. And I read the, all the ordinance, um, but I think they're more than just suggestions. I mean, they, they were the code was put into place. This is a very difficult kind of area. I mean, I, um, the plan checks and the, and the ministerial process that went through. This was basically a paperwork process. If it fit certain things, and, and it checked off a list. I think if you go out and take a look at there is this is. This shouldn't have the, this huge thing on the hill there. I mean, if it was a granny flat, none of us would be here now. Okay, you want a granny flat? You want th that's and that's what, what the idea of the state law was. We're, we're fine with that. I wouldn't. We wouldn't be fighting Mr. Cohen over that. But he's gone for the absolute maximum that he can do, and that's that's questionable. It's it's you know, and you wouldn't get this many people here if it, if if they didn't feel strongly about it. Uh, I mean, some, you know, it's, uh, we would have had more people, but school is out, and you know, I mean, you would have been just deluged with, with, with the blue slips. Um, so yes, we have, a, we have a lot of concerns, and this gentleman is a difficult gentleman. I mean, I, I, I don't want to bring up any, but he 
said that he was going to buy me or sell me in a million dollars and then he doesn't have the money. Um, all we're asking is please just make it adhere to what the Santa Barbara ordinance is. That's it. Thank okay. you. Okay. Other questions? Yes. Um, well, I've got one while you're looking. Yeah. Um, question for staff. Um, the Santa Barbara ADU ordinance um, didn't come into um, effect until recently. Does it apply to this or can it apply to this um, subject? Uh, Mr. Chair, the, it's my understanding that the um, ADU ordinance approved by City Council recently goes into effect on June 14th and all applications made prior to June 14th are reviewed only to the state standards, not to the new ordinance. May I speak with Brenda? Please, please come forward. Yeah. You're going to have a building up there that no other building is going to be al allowed in, in Santa Barbara. This is a, an outlier. This, is, this is, is kind of crazy. From the last meeting, the way to we thought that you hammered out was the appropriate method was to revoke the permit on this, let the man put it through, and adhere to the Santa Barbara ordinance. I think that's fair. I think it's kind of cutting in the middle. We're not trying to say to him nothing, you know. We would like nothing, <laughs> believe me. I mean, it's a threat. <coughs> but the only way we believe we can get it to fall under the Santa Barbara ordinance is to deny this, uh, the, the, the permit, as you, as you all worked out in, in the last uh, meeting. And, uh, and you even had questions about it, it should be uh, retroactive for, for other ADUs in the area. Um, this is this is this is serious. I mean, uh, this is something we're going to be dealing with for the rest of our lives. Um, we're just and you know, we're just asking you to just let's put, you know the guy slipped in. If we had had time, if we'd known when the first paperwork went in, we would be able to go to all the meetings. But there were no meetings. There were no meetings. This is the only place we've been able to bring these matters up. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, go ahead. I had a, an, another question. I got a. Some, sometimes I have a hard time because I know the question, but I have to form it, and I haven't quite formed it yet. Um, but it regards um, if if we ask for the, um, uh, the bill of laden or whatever it is for the um, uh, grading, the, yeah, for the grading, um, and it came back that it was say uh, you know um, uh, 110 cubic yards over the 50 that's allowed. And uh, that uh, ordinarily that would have been kicked to, uh, you know, right. review. Um, could we, and you say this is the final decision today. What we're trying to determine is we have some more information which is not here. The, uh, we don't have a civil engineer here that represented the project. And you can only abide by, you know, uh, it's sort of what we s talk about computers, you know, garbage in, garbage out. Um, if we don't get the proper data going in, we can't get the proper assessment going out. Uh, and uh, if, if, if in fact the grading is the issue, not you, the fire you say it complies in every way, uh, ADU probably would have wanted some kind of sprinkler system or something in there as a, some protection. I mean, I'm I'm just surmising. I'm d please don't think that's a decision. I mean, I'm just surmising. Possibly that could have been something they would have asked for. The height might might have come under uh, some serious consideration, considering the impact to the neighborhood, w which is one of the purviews of the a ADR. Um, d my question is, if we can ask that the uh, bill of laden laden be pr provided. Can we like address that issue? Um, wait a minute. I think we're, we're at a good point. Go ahead. Have a point well, I think we're there too, so is it, we're yeah. okay. Oh. Yeah. Um, could we send this back to the ADR for review? Um, and does the, the does it can does this law still um, come into a f does it that will it, would it interfere? with uh, what the determination of the ADR would be. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, Mr. Chair, board members, I think I if I understand um, board member Zilla's uh, question, it is 
if we, well, first off, let me, let me say this. The it's explicitly in our adoption of the building code where we establish the Board of Appeals, you have the ability to ask for more information. You do not have to make a decision when you feel you ha don't have adequate information. You can um, take measures such as um, directing us to put a stay on a permit, uh, uh, place the permit on hold so that construction cannot continue until you've had an opportunity to obtain that information and render a decision. Um, if you were to ask for proof of the quantity of grading that was done and that proof that was provided uh, to your satisfaction was in excess of the uh, 50 cubic yards that are exempt from grading permit, um, that would place, we would then place the building, uh, the but without your direction, we would place the building permit um, in a hold status for re-review okay. because it would then require a grading permit which would also require design single family design review and stormwater pollution prevention compliance for, th for tier three construction. Okay, so I think I can help with that. Okay, um, good. I'd like to go ahead and make a motion that the board overturn the decision of the chief building official to issue a permit at 836 De La Guerra Terrace. Mr. Chair, hang on one sec, point of order. Uh, let's go by the how it's written on the agenda because okay. last time we didn't yeah. and we, we ended up having things out of order a little bit. So the standing motion when we have an appeal of a decision of my office or the fire marshal's office is that okay. the decision is to uphold, the, the motion is to uphold. You don't have to make that motion, it's already on the floor. Right. So all you have to do is call that motion to vote and then depending on how that motion goes, you can then provide other motions if necessary. Thank you for the clarification. So I'd like to make a first motion to not uphold the decision of the chief building official. Do I have a second? Okay, Mr. Chair, um, I, I really encourage you to read the verbiage on here. Greta actually writes it out for us so we get it right. So we have a standing motion to uphold the decision of the chief building official. I would like to make a motion to that motion's on the floor. You, no motion is needed. Oh, All gotcha, you have okay, to sorry. do is call it to vote. All right, so let's call it to vote. Do, I have a, um, do we need a second for that or no? no? Okay, let's just call the motion. All those in favor of upholding the motion say aye. All those in favor of not upholding the motion say nay. 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 Unanimous. Just for clarification, point for the uh, record uh, the decision to the decision is to deny the chief building officials decision to uphold the permit correct that is correct sorry sorry I just want to uh, sorry can you because <laughs> I was confused that I wasn't sure yeah. get me okay. confused now. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll go through it here again one more time I'm gonna read it right from here we have a standing motion to uphold the decision of the chief building official so whenever our decisions appealed, the standing motion in front of the board is to uphold the decision. So you have to vote on that first, and you just took a vote. Uh, I don't know if everybody voted. Um, I, didn't one one. I didn't hear Jim, but you should go one by one and get the vote um, of each person. Do they want to uphold the decision of the building official, which was to issue this permit? Okay. And then depending on how that vote goes, there may be subsequent motions. Okay, let's do it individually. Ken? Uh, the same vote, nay. Jim, nay. Bonnie. Uh, I, I, this this is my last meeting, so um, I want to get I want to really be clear on this. Your your okay, you're gonna your your motion is to get in the the, the. the question before you right now is, do you uphold the decision of the building official to issue this building permit? No. Marcia. No. John, no. Now, Mr. Chair, you may go wherever you would like with motions. Apologize for our lack of support. <laughs> That's all right. We'll continue. <laughs> all right. Now I can make the next motion. All right. Um, I would like to make a motion to overturn the decision of the chief building official to issue a permit at 836 De La Guerra Terrace and require that the building department confirm the grading that has been done on site. Do I have a second? A second. A second from Marcia. Mr. Chair, uh, before you uh, have a discussion or vote on this, I'd like to clarify your motion. Sure. Um, is your the intent of your motion that we confirm the quantity of grading? Uh, specifically, the amount of cubic yards that have been removed from the site. Okay. And is your mo does your motion also include um, any 
uh, restrictions on the continuation of construction under this permit while that information is being gathered. I'd like to have discussion between the board before we clarify that. We'll make a friendly amendment to the motion. Um, Mr. Chair, yeah. uh, I would support the motion provided that it, that grading, should it fall over a certain threshold, would obviate the need for the further review. I don't want that lost in the discussion. I, I think that happens automatically. I, I want to make sure it but does. The, the question I want to discuss with us right yeah. now is do we want to stop all work on site while this is Right, I got that. Okay. Well, how do we feel about that? Mr. Chair, um, Mr. Dwemus has uh, a question he wants to confer on, and I think it'd be best to air that out. So yeah. Sure. Sure. So at, at this point, um, your decision is final, and so your authority under the municipal code is you can overturn the decision of the chief building official whether or not to issue a permit. So as of today, you've not, you've denied the issuance of a permit. So there is no active permit. So it would be in appropriate or improper to all of a sudden, when there's no permit, how can you all of a sudden order some restrictions or any other actions on someone when there's no permit? It's, it's, right, it's so moot. It's we don't need to discuss it, basically. There's no permit okay. to discuss <laughs> Thank you. right now. All right. Um, so uh, I had one other sure. uh, question which related to um, there was allegations of construction going on. Uh, eight hours is no problem, but the 12 hours without, um, you know, additional permissions and there was none. Mr. Chair, I would suggest that you um, advise the members of the audience that this uh, public comment period is over. Well, well, yeah, I didn't hear 12. Did you? I heard 12. I took my notes. That's why I, I was going over. Notes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to get everyone's comments down to see I where we stand. I didn't catch it. Anybody else catch 12 hours? Eight to 12 hours. It was by, uh, was it Patrick? Okay. Oh, he donated his times. Well, well just, just for, just, uh, the, the question I have is what, what, is, what is the line of questioning geared toward? What is the, the yeah, point the of the question? Yeah. What, what I'm going towards is, is that, it too, would be a violation. Um, it, it wouldn't be a grading violation, but it would be a building violation. Correct, but, but as I said but before. But only related to stop work, correct? Not correct, related yeah. to any additional punitive. And, 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 th and this is not a matter in the purview of the, the Board of Appeals right now. Okay. The, the only matter before the Board of Appeals is okay. my Thank you. chief building official's decision. Right, so Mr. So Chair, let me. Um, I do need findings. So um, you've given, you've made a decision, um, but I do need what to what have the findings for the decision. So we we actually haven't called the question yet, right? Well, I, I think what what Mr. Um, Doimus has told us is that since the decision of my office to issue the permit has been has Overturned. not been upheld, right? That means there is no permit. Right. So that we don't, we don't need so to make any other. Yeah. Well, you, you don't need to give any other direction other than tell us for the record what the findings were that, that was the basis for that decision. Mm -hmm. So the discussion of the board could be here's why we okay. made the decision we just made. All right. Thank you. And, and, the purpose oh, okay. th and the purpose to add for this too, as I said, there is a ability uh, to review of court. So if a court looks at an administrative record, they'd be looking at these proceedings and wondering, okay, we have a no vote, but why? Why is there a no vote? Yeah. And so that that's the purpose. Right. Well, that's kind of right. So as the maker of the second motion, I'll go ahead and take it off the table. All right. Um, let's discuss the motion that we carried to overturn the chief building official's decision and why. Mr. Chair, yeah. uh, as a former fire marshal, somebody that did Joe's job for 22 years, I fully understand and appreciate uh, the idea that an argument might be raised about access. Um, it's important to realize that some of these laws came into effect well after a, an environment was created or improved, and uh, that's clearly the case here. And it's clear that uh, you have a number of existing nonconforming conditions that exist in uh, Santa Barbara and elsewhere. Um, so I'm not really ready to entertain the fire argument. I, I've always held the idea that uh, the memory of the human, you know, the human mind has a half-life to its memory of about six months, and we were within six months of the last fire, so everybody's thinking about it. But reality is, you've got an existing non-conforming condition without this project at all. You already are living in that environment. 
So reality here for me is I'm going to focus on whether this place is too big or not, and I've been assured here that while I may not agree with the standard, they're within the, the requirements of that standard. So that leaves me with a grading issue. So our conversation here was about did he or didn't he? And I don't like voting in a vacuum either. I'm just like Marsha in that regard. So uh, I want to talk about I want to talk about a motion that stalls this permit. If it, there's if there is such a thing, I've been told a moment ago that there is no permit uh, to see that we have compliance with the grading issues, particularly with the kind of slopes and the soils that are so rampant here in Santa Barbara foothills. So uh, I would like to back up, get a permit that addresses the grading issues appropriately and uh, and and be done with it. Okay, thank you. Bonnie? Yeah, I've got um, my point of view. Um, I don't think anything, any more buildings should be built in your neighborhood in a cul-de-sac. It's a, it's a tight area. Nothing should be built there. We just had a huge fire and then we had a, a pretty big, a real bad debris flow. And I it obviously hit part of your area, not much, but I, you know, I, I, but I, it's like, don't people learn if they live on a hillside, there's going to be problems. I don't get it. People just don't learn. Nothing, nothing should be built there. Nothing more. It's full. No more building. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ken, do you have anything to add? I mean, I know that we've had quite a bit of growth in the area. You know, I'm, you know, when I moved here, people were beginning to build, and you know, it is hazardous. And you know, what we've learned recently from the mudslides and the fires is that you know it does cause a problem when you grade extensively. And my feeling is that it is dangerous up there. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Marcia? Um, I, I was kind of, um, I, I didn't quite understand you on the access fire issue when, it, when the buildings were built in 1931 and the fire code actually came into effect in 1970, which means we couldn't do anything about the existing conditions. They kind of got grannied in, right? Um, I was uncertain as to w when you said that Joe ruled on the fire access is what it is and that's fine. Uh, because of existing conditions, what I'm trying to find out is, do you feel it still should be reviewed anyway, or the fire issues? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I, we've been told that there's 25 foot of width there. 25 foot of width is still substandard for parking to one side. You need 28 feet under the uh, public works codes that I've worked with. If you want parking to both sides, you need 35 feet, and you, that's just the co that's just the code. It's been there for, and it was not put forth by firemen. It was put forth by, by civil engineers. Are there any in the room? <laughs> be a lot wider if it's fire. Yeah. You know, well, the point is, is 20 feet allows a f one fire truck to nudge past another in the event that they're trying to do their job. And if you have a fire up in one of your houses, I guarantee you, you're going to need a lot of fire trucks to make it happen in a way that benefits the community itself. So... <laughs> Pressing this man about what he does or doesn't do to his property is, <laughs> in terms of the f this road, is, is, it's just not, I don't think that's for us to determine. That whole community could burn down, and I guarantee you that, in large part, you'll be allowed to rebuild most of what you have. That's what's going on all over California right now. Try to keep somebody that's burned out of a house from restoring, coming back to normal, or... Uh, or making them whole. There's no fire marshal that can stand in the path of that. I've tried. You know, so uh, please understand, we have to deal with the realities of this. If we're really worried about fire, let's get that thing striped. Let's get some grading done. You know, let's take three feet off of somebody's, you know, front yard and, and get it done so we're meeting the standards so that we don't have that type of argument. If we're serious about fire here, I don't think that's what's going on here. I do think, though, that we need to seriously consider how much dirt was moved and what its impact is upon that community. And that's, that's where I want to dwell. Okay. And I had one last question, which I tried to phrase before, and I don't think I did it well enough. And that is that um, the, the, if the 
is there, um, if it were to go back to the ABR, are they, do they have purview over ADUs? Um, because we never used to, at least in the county, we never used to have purview over um, second residential units. They just completely went by us. And so I'm, I'm worried that we go through these hoops to try to, I mean, apart from the, the grading issues. Uh, and get it back to to ABR, and then they say, you know, state law says we can't review them. Mr. Mr. Chair and board members, um, th that's a really good question that I don't have the answer to. Kay. I don't know when it when if there was more than 50 cubic yards of earth moved, and it does have to go to single family design board because of the grading. <coughs> excuse me, because of the grading permit mm. that's required. I'm not sure how if that sets the scope of their. Um, review to solely the grading or if that opens up the whole project to review. So I, I'll write that question down and I'll, I'll look up that answer. And I have a, a question for staff as well. Um, we've overturned the decision of the chief building official and there is no permit at this point. In order for a permit to be issued, if it were issued after June 14th, would it have to comply with the uh, Mr. Chair, board members, no. The application date is the vesting date okay. of the project. I want to make sure that was clear. Thank you. So, so would we have to write into it that um, that we would like them to start on June 14th? No, so no, no that's outside <laughs> your pur that's outside your purview. And like I said, the vesting date means that they are under the old rules because that's when the application is happening. Okay. Agreed. Okay. I think we've all been clear. Grading is one of the yeah. prime issues of Thank why you. we overturned the. Chief Building Officials' uh, decision. Uh, and Mr. Chair, I have made a note of that. So I have one of the findings is that um, the board w was concerned with the quantity of grading and that it exceeded the exempt amount for a grading permit. Correct. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to clarify something that was brought up before. I mentioned the 8 to 12 hours of construction. Someone had mentioned that. And that pertains to, I guess, Kyle, Butterwick, who just moved in to the neighborhood two weeks ago or so. Uh, that's what I have written down here. Mm -hmm. uh, and that um, he is a former uh, community development um, in, uh, building, official. building official. And so I didn't uh, want to I'll overlook. Give him the credit that he deserves. He was a director, so he would director. be my boss. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I didn't want to uh, not address uh, his issues. Okay. Uh, uh, that's what I'm saying. So if, I don't know if there's any relevancy in that, but um, you know, as far as our project goes. Uh, Mr. Chair, board members, um, I can uh, guarantee you that our building and safety inspection crew will respond to complaints of work outside of the work hours that are afforded in the municipal code. Um, saying that, <laughs> uh, you'll be shocked when you look at how, what hours of the day and night you can work according to the municipal code. I think you can work six to eight or something, or seven to, seven to eight. Seven to eight, yeah, it's very, it's a very, yeah, Saturdays, Sundays, holidays, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's pretty permissive. That's pretty permissive, yeah. yeah. Wow. Thank you. Do we have anything else on this, on this subject? Sure. So Mr. Chair, could you come up to the microphone yeah, sorry, here? Sorry, uh, up to the microphone. So we hear, because I think it's a, p a point of order question, and we're yeah. entertaining that, but we wouldn't, the public comments over, so as long Correct. as it's point oh. of order. <coughs> <again>. <coughs> Thank you for <coughs> this opportunity, Mr. Chairman. Kyle Butterwick. Uh, I believe your motion made reference to uh, a determination about the amount of, of, of excavation that has been removed from the site to date. Uh, but uh, my estimation, that's only sort of one half the question because I know they, the property owner uh, conceded that they are in the early stages of construction and presumably there's a lot more grading to be done on the property. So it's not only a question about how much earth has been removed to date, but also to project forward, given the existing condition, how much more is necessary in order to achieve compliance with the approved plans. Just that point of clarification. I oh, appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and it's our expectation that the building department will thoroughly 
review the grading being done and to be done. Understood. A question in the back? Please come on up. Well, hang, hang on, Mr. Chair. We have a comment from our city attorney. We, we've already voted on the issue, and it's been decided. Correct. So I don't, I don't know where comments are. It, it, it's the concern is it, it should be it, it's a final decision, and it should move on to the next item. There's another item, and all that. So my concern is the record. He, here's my concern: questions posed, further de deliberation on something that's already been decided. So it's highly improper, creates a very messy record. So I just want to, yeah. can't tell the board to what to do, but I'm just cautioning it very strongly in terms of where <laughs> where we're going with this. And do you have a clarification or? Yeah. yeah. Exactly, I just have a question for you actually, um, Mr. Duenas. <laughs> uh, just so we're clear on the process, does the applicant need to reapply or th does he have to modify his permit or what is the procedure? I'll, I'll okay. field that for you, John. Uh, uh, board members, um, and I, I'm, I've forgotten your name, I'm sorry. Maureen Duras. Maureen Duras. Um, so w we, the decision of the office was to issue a building permit. So that decision has been overturned, but the application for building permit still st stands active in the system. So the findings are important to us because the findings are what we're going to take back and re-examine, re-review the case based on those findings. And if we can find that the permit should have been issued, we'll issue, th we'll make another decision, and that decision is subject to appeal again, if, if that's the desire of the appellant. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You gotta come back up to the microphone now. <laughs> okay. It's Mr. another Mr. clarification, Chair, right? Mr. Chair, I, the city attorney's uh, shaking his head. I, I'm just gonna reiterate what he has advised the board. You've made a decision, um, and, and I think this is important for the members of the, of the audience here to hear. It, this is a hearing, and if we mess up the record, um, then that doesn't help the decision that's been made. That will cloud the decision that's been made, and that may have an adverse effect on anyone who was in favor of the decision that was made. Okay. We, we, we have public comment limited for two minutes. It's a hearing. Understood. Uh, you don't under the judge doesn't turn it over to a crowd in the audience, or judge, you're acting as administrative judges to this point, so I, 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 re I really caution again on this point and something that won't, so it looks like it's ending, so that's why I'm very, being very cautious on this, on this, on this issue. So uh, you have a decision, yes, you, ha you, have, you have a decision, uh, it's been decided, so it, it mm -hmm. seems like at this juncture with these questionings, all of a sudden it's being reopened. I, if, if people in the audience do have some questions, they're free to email either myself or the chief building official in terms of the process versus I think this is not the improper proper forum to do so at this point. Okay, appreciate that. Um, based on what he just said, in your <laughs> past position <laughs> and knowledge, do you have anything you would really like to add or not? Well, I, <coughs> I, I do because there have been statements that there was not proper notification uh, periodically as part uh, of this I'm gonna, process. I'm gonna go ahead and stop you there because we've already made a decision to overturn his decision. I, I, and we've given a reason for it. No, I understand that, but okay. the, the assistant building official indicated that um, at the end of the day, they have the prerogative to reissue, reinstate the permit. Uh, and my question was simply, if and when that were to happen, is there public notification? How do we know if and when that action takes place? Mr. Chair, I'd be more than happy to field questions of this nature when the, the meeting's been closed. Thank you, appreciate the clarification. Thank and thank you. Um, Let's uh, close this topic and move on to the next subject. 13, 1332 Kenwood Road. Mr. Chair, if you want to call the next item. I'll yes, uh, my report. next item is 1332 Kenwood Road. Um, it's uh, appealing a decision to issue a notice. Um, could staff uh, present and advise on the standing motion, please? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I stand by our staff report on 1332 Kenwood. 
And if any board members have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Does anyone have a question on 1332 Kenwood? Mr. Chair? Yes. I, I did read everything on Kenwood uh, yesterday, and uh, I wasn't sure. Were we able to find the ass belts and the, the, uh, the, the construction drawings for the project, or? Uh, Mr. Chair and board members, um, Lauren Anderson's the senior inspector. She's going to come sit over here to my right. She doesn't know it yet. Yes. Yes, she will. Um, and she, she's the inspector, senior inspector who's done the work on this case, and she can give you the details of it. Okay. The, the question was with the questions. archive plans. The archive plans? I was able to go through what we did have of the archive plans and through the street file. And do they have the printout? that I have in front yeah, of they you. have the staff report okay. in front of them, yes. So you have my staff report in front of you. Um, it was confusing. Did you want me to walk you through it? How? Um, not really. My question was, uh, w w did you have the documents uh, from which to draw the conclusions that, uh, that you are? Uh, I just, it seemed like that a lot of the argument that was put is that statements were made by staff at different points in the history of the building, and uh, were they accurate or not? And basically the base argument for whether they were or not is do we have the documents uh, on file? We, I used documents from the street file, the archive plans, and also some of the comments that were made during plan check that, that were in our computer, some of the historical file okay, to great. come I up with, with this. Lauren, that's um, great. I just couldn't figure that out from what I was reading. I needed to know that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions for staff? Um, do we have any public comment? We'll go ahead and close public comment. Um, we have a standing motion to uphold the decision of the chief building official. Is there any other questions that the board has? No? Nope. All right. Um, since we have an upstand, uh, would anyone like to make a motion? I'll make that motion that we uphold the. Uh, Notice of violation. Do we, do we need to? <laughs> <laughs> this is so awkward, okay, Mr. Chair. Okay, you do it. Hang on. Hang on. Time out. Time out. This is so awkward, and, and we're, we'll get used to it eventually. Well, it, if it's an upstanding motion, do we have to? You don't even have to make a motion. There's right. a standing motion, right. and it's written here, uphold the decision of the chief building official. That's going to be your first vote. Okay. will be on that motion. Right. So um, call the vote. Let's go ahead and call the vote. Ken, how do you vote? Mr. Chair, if any of the board members would like, we can repeat the standing motion so they know what they're voting on. Um, I think it's clear. Yeah. Does Ken have a question? Whatever conversation's happening at the end of the table has I'm to be. I'm just trying to figure out, um, I'm just trying to follow the process of yeah. what we're okay. doing right now. So I just want to make sure that I understand what's happening. Okay, the, um, so, the, yeah. our standing. Uh, our standing motion is to uphold what the building department has decided um, for, that address, for, for, for this particular address. So my vote is aye. Aye. Jim? Aye. Bonnie? Aye. Marcia? Aye. John? Yeah, aye. Um, it's unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I believe that completes your uh, the items on your agenda. Yes, it does. Thank you. Um, I'd like to have a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to uh, adjourn. Uh, 